The adult toy company Lovins had a serious security vulnerability that allowed hackers to uncover the email addresses of the 11 million plus Lovins users, dox them, and in many cases take over their accounts and even remotely control their toys without authorization. To make matters worse, security researchers reported these vulnerabilities to Lovins multiple times as far back as 2016, and the vulnerabilities were not fixed until literally yesterday. So Lovins has known about these issues longer than the duration of most cam girls' careers. But the the absolute worst part about this situation is how Lovins responded to the researchers that responsibly disclosed the vulnerabilities over the past decade. Instead of paying these white hats handsomely for disclosing a bug that could have not just wiped out this company, but the broader cam girl industry, Lovins decided to pay one researcher with a couple of free toys and threatened to sue another one that called them out on their bullshit. Hi, I'm Mental Outlaw, and this is how hackers exploit your vulnerable holes. So if you haven't heard of Lovins, they're basically the most popular adult toy manufacturer of their kind. These things are a lot more high tech than your grandma's Hitachi Magic Wand because you can control these toys remotely with an app. And they even have integration with adult cam sites, which we'll cover more in a bit because I believe that's where the most severe exploits reside. Now, I can understand why someone might want a remote app controlled vibrator. Maybe your husband is a traveling sales and you want him to be able to buzz your bean while he's away on business. The part I can't quite wrap my head around though is why Lovence forces all users of these toys to sign up with an email address. Maybe I'm just a square, but I'm willing to bet that most people who use toys like this are either playing solo or co-op with a partner that they already have an intimate relationship with. So why not handle the pairing of these devices locally and avoid the whole email debacle in the first place? Most of you watching know that this is the kind of thing that you use a throwaway email for, but your average gooner or boomer looking to buy a marital aid doesn't know that and will probably end up using their personal email address for registration to the Lovins platform. So here's a breakdown of the actual vulnerability provided by Bob the Hacker, and I'll leave a link to his blog in the description of this video. It started when Bob the Hacker muted his ex through the Lovins app and discovered his ex's email in the request body. In this app, only usernames are supposed to be displayed and these usernames are public. But Bob found that you can actually get people's emails by encrypting the usernames with keys that anyone can get by sending a post request to the Gen G token API endpoint and then sending another post request with that encrypted payload to this Ajax check endpoint. This gives you a fake email that you can convert to a Jabber ID used by XMPP by replacing the at sign with three exclamation marks and adding an underscore W suffix like this example JID that he shows here. Then you can add it to your XMPP roster, send a presence subscription request to that JID, then fetch your roster, which returns the user's real JID, which contains their email if you reverse the email to JID conversion by swapping out the three exclamation marks for an at sign and you drop that underscore W kind of like this example that he gives here. It's also important to point out that this is just how XMPP works. So by Lovence building their infrastructure this way and pushing it to production, they either knowingly endanger the people using their platform or their devs are just so incompetent that they fail to understand the basics of XMPP before integrating it into their platform. Now, the process of converting usernames to emails was easy to automate with a single threaded script. So Bob was able to convert public Lovin's usernames to private email addresses in under one second. Later on, another security researcher named Eva discovered that you could make auth tokens to gain access to someone's Lovin's account with essentially just their email address and no password by crafting a request with these parameters that are hard coded into the app. The only secret here would be the user's email, but like I explained, that can easily be gotten from the public list of usernames. Now the auth token generated would work for Lovins extension, Lovins connect, Stream Master, Cam 101 through the login link, and even admin accounts for cam streamers. Now, I was curious what kind of malicious action someone could actually take with access to a Lovence account besides the obvious blackmail approach in cases where someone uses a personal email address to register an account, you expose them for having one. So I hopped on a Discord call with Bob and we did some experimenting. 
We discovered that you could remotely take over someone's toy by spamming fake tip requests to a model. You could change all of a cam girl's settings in their dashboard. You could disconnect their stream, but I think the most devastating attack would be uploading malicious stickers to this sticker tab here. So just like on Twitch, when you donate to someone that's streaming and a little picture or GIF shows up, Every time someone does that, same concept applies here, but a hacker could actually upload illegal images as stickers, which would be displayed the next time the cam model goes live on stream. And since you can send fake tips, the hacker could trigger the stickers to show up whenever they want, which would most likely result in that cam model getting banned. Same thing if you were to modify these chat box settings. So these are automatic chats that get sent to users and you could modify the default flirty stuff that cam models probably put in here to be racial slurs or links to malware or other illegal materials. And then boom, the cam model's career would be over for spamming that stuff. You could swap out the model's donation links for your own. You could change the bio link to contain malware or link to other illegal materials. And you could even put IP grabber links in there to try and dox the people that are watching the cam models. Plus you can get the usernames of the people that are watching and then use that to get their email addresses and boom, you've got the whole Ashley Madison email leak all over again, pretty much endless extortion capabilities through this bug. And that's not even the worst thing that you can do in here. Hackers could modify these stickers to actually use remote images that are hosted on a web server that the hacker controls, which means that that would give the hacker the IP address of the cam model, assuming that she wasn't using some kind of VPN when she's streaming, which they probably aren't. And with access to a cam model's account, you can also view their home address if they were to have set up a wish list through Lovence to let their viewers buy them new toys. And this is probably the worst part of the leak because obviously a cam model wouldn't want an army of sweaty gooners showing up to her house for an IRL goon session. The exposure of that data point alone could easily lead to the assault or death of the streamers that are using these toys in these platforms, which is pretty much all of them because Lovence has exclusive deals with the major adult streaming sites for stream integration to work with their toys only. I wasn't kidding when I said that this bug could have disrupted the entire adult cam model industry. So here's where we get to the cover up and Lovent's cheapness when it comes to paying out bug bounties. And again, I really recommend reading Bob the Hacker's blog for all of the details because I'm just giving you an abridged version in this video. So about 18 months ago, another hacker named Posty Poo on Twitter revealed that they had reported the same bugs to Lovent's and as a reward for responsibly disclosing these bugs, Lovent's offered to give the person two free sex toys, which they just accepted for the lulls. Now, the whole point of bug bounty programs is to give white hat hackers, aka the good guys, a decent reward for their findings so that they'll actually be motivated enough to do this difficult work to find bugs before the bad guys do. I can imagine that the top cam models make millions of dollars each year. And as I already explained, these bugs, if exploited by a black hat, could prevent the cam models from streaming. You could get them banned. You could even dox them. So black hats could easily black mail them for tens of thousands of dollars to not use all those exploits against them. Or a cam model could hire the black hats to take out her competition. Back in September 2023, when a hacker named Chrissy reported these vulnerabilities to Lovence again, they claimed to have fixed it about three weeks later, but Chrissy checked and the issues were still not fixed. Then the same day, Lovence tried to downgrade the severity of this vulnerability from critical to medium so that they could just pay out a lesser bug bounty of $350 to Chrissy. Then in March of 2025, Eva, Rebane, and Bob the Hacker reported the same account takeover bug and email finding bugs to Lovence once again, but they pushed hard this time to keep the severity listed as critical so that they could receive a $3,000 bug bounty, which still seems pretty cheap given the severity of this vulnerability and the fact that this company has over 11 million users worldwide. You would think that they could spare a a little bit more money for the good guys who discovered a bug that would not just severely damage their reputation, but 
The fines that Lovins is going to face in places like the EU for not properly securing or disclosing the security issue to users will easily eclipse the bug bounty that they paid out many times over. And again, the bug still was not properly fixed in March. It was finally fixed two days ago. Now, the shadiest part of all this, in my opinion, is the switch up that Lovins did with Bob the Hacker's disclosure. First of all, they tried to also downgrade the severity of the issue with him as well by trying to say that in order to get the person's email, you had to accept their friend request, which is not true. All you need is their username, which like I said, is already public information. So you could effectively have used this bug to get the email address of all 11 million Lovins users. And then they tried to stop Bob the Hacker from disclosing the details of this bug on his own blog here. Now, it's completely normal for white hat hackers to disclose these vulnerabilities to the public like Bob did here after a sufficient time has passed for the company to actually fix the problem. Because if they're going to drag their feet for two years, or I guess even 10 years really, like Lovins did, then the right thing for the white hat hacker to do is at least inform the public so that other people who are using this can try to protect themselves. Now, at first, Lovins was perfectly fine with this, perfectly fine with Bob writing his blog post. Uh, but then after this blog post went live, Lovins tried to report Bob to HackerOne, the most popular platform for bug bounties. And in his most recent update, he said that HackerOne is currently siding with Lovins. So this is complete scumbag behavior in my opinion, and this company absolutely deserves to go under. Now let's talk about mitigations. The most obvious solution to me seems like just not using any type of smart uh, personal massager. I mean, obviously that would take away from the whole integration with streaming sites for the cam models and stuff like that. But I think it might be worth it to them to drop that integration to know that they're at least a little bit safer from getting doxxed and people with violent tendencies or other kinds of sickos coming to their homes and hurting them. And like I hinted at in the beginning of this video, I think the majority of the 11 million users that are using these devices are either playing solo or they're playing co-op with their intimate partner. So it seems completely unnecessary to have these integrations for those kinds of activities. I mean, just stick to the traditional method of, you know, finding a nice gal and then bringing her home to your dungeon, tying her up spread eagle, and then working her over with a Hitachi magic wand. I mean, honestly, nothing outperforms the HB 265 that plugs into the wall outlet anyway, unless someone out there has come up with a personal massager that's powered by a diesel engine. So avoid these smart massagers at all costs. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.